Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fortress of Solitude. Today we're going to be checking out Superman issue 17 by Joshua Williamson and Jamal Campbell. Superman's magical adventure with Zatanna continues as the heroes head to the Justice League Dark HQ under the Hall of Order which Waller hasn't managed to get into just yet. This issue is set after the big events of Absolute Power Issue 2, where Superman's Fortress of Solitude was destroyed by Brainiac Queen and the new cyborg Superman, John Kent. So Clark is not in a very good place right now. He's frustrated, he can't really do anything since he doesn't have his powers, and he can't save his son or stop Waller, and is forced to hide out and fight from the shadows, something he's not used to. And on top of that, he's got to rely on magic, something he's never really had an affinity for or a love for. Williamson writes a really nice moment between Zatanna and Clark early on in the issue when Superman takes his frustrations out on a brick wall, hurting his hands in the process. And it's great to see both these characters who you never really see interact or team up or bond together, coming together to talk about their own experiences with loss, with Zatanna talking about her father, while Superman talks about his son and how grieving and actually going through the motions of, you know, anger and sadness and everything is what makes them human. And it's totally a normal reaction. Superman and Zatanna get on with their mission though, which is to find the map of Mordru so they can use the Dark Roads, which will allow them access into the multiverse in order to get help from their multiversal friends. Before they get the map though, Zatanna needs to focus what little magic she has access to, and there is something in the Justice League Dark HQ that she needs to do that with. Walla Mimol is not happy that Peacemaker lost Lex Luthor and the others, who escaped Supercorp with the help of an armoured Lois Lane. Walla begins to think there is something up with Luthor, and she is right since he's got amnesia from the events of House of Brainiac, and he cannot remember who he is. And it's why he's palling around now with Lois, Jimmy, Siobhan, and his daughter Lena, who have retreated to Lena's apartment. So last issue I wondered why Lois and the others weren't manning the Daily Planet, you know, trying to combat Walla's misinformation campaign the best way they know how. And it's like Williamson read my mind since Lois explains that being at the planet is kind of pointless since Waller is in all the systems, she's kind of locked everything down, and she would rather, in classic Lois Lane fashion, be proactive when it comes to combating Waller's plans, deciding to fight her head on in the armor she found at Supercorp. On top of that, she's kind of worried about Superman since the last she heard of him, he was shot, but she doesn't know whether that was just Waller's fake news or whether it was real, and she's trying to get some answers. Lex also wants to help as well since he's frustrated thanks to him hearing about this man he was, or this man who was apparently him, and he could do all these things, but now he can't do that because he can't remember anything. And there's kind of a funny moment where he thinks they are showering him with praise, and he's like, oh, Lex must have been such a great man. I wish I could be him. And, and everyone else is just like, yeah, he's not such a great man. He's kind of a villain. What little we have gotten of Lex or this version of Lex has been quite fun. I like that he's more of a follower than a leader since he doesn't know who he is so he isn't sure of what type of person he is. So I'm just gonna follow Jimmy Olsen and Silver Banshee around until he finds out what's going on. I do wish they would use him a little bit more. I can understand why they not. I imagine his story is going to continue on after Absolute Power wraps up and I, I'm sure Williamson has something in store for this. Of course, Lex has to get his memory back and I'm sure he will and I'm sure it will revert Lex back to a more villainous Lex than what we've gotten as of late. But I like that he's just this kind of timid guy. He's just a guy, really. He even kind of looks differently. He's kind of growing in a bit, bit of a beard and he's got a bit of, you know, stubble on his head and everything. He looks really quite cool and I, I kind of wish they would keep that look for him going forward. The team don't really know where to go from there and don't know what's real and what's not thanks to Waller's misinformation camp campaign, but luckily Mercy shows up to help them, having tracked them to Lena's apartment, which means if she can track them, Amanda Waller is not far behind. As Mercy catches Lois up on what's happened to Superman, and Lois catches Mercy up on what's going on with Lex, Superman and Zatanna continue deeper into the Justice League Dark's sanctum, where Superman reveals that since getting shot, he's been having all sorts of visions about his past run-ins with magic users, which Jamal Campbell has been wonderfully peppering throughout the book, first showcasing Clark as Superboy fighting a new villain called Kid Warlock through Smallville, and then again fighting Felix Forst with Batman, which is something we actually saw in Mark Wade's World's Finest book a couple of arcs ago, so I like that Williamson is even tapping into Wade, who was running this whole Absolute Power game, uh, he, tapping into his stories. I think that's pretty damn cool. 
Campbell's art throughout the entire book is just on point. It's just immaculate. Every panel is just so well thought out and I love how creative they get with all the different ways they show panels and especially when it comes to action. Uh, they have a great knack for action. I, I love that everything is also bathed in this kind of great warm light because obviously Superman's not in his casual costume he's in his solar suit is his uh, return of superman suit uh, the black suit so you don't get that usual splash of color with his costume so jamal has kind of like shifted that into oh we'll just use the light around him so everything's bathed in a nice warm inviting light like what you get when you get that superman costume zatanna goes on to explain that the visions superman sees are the dark roads doing figuring that it must know they are trying to find it as they arrive at the path a swamp thing uses to to access the Parliament of Trees. It's a nice little forest within this maze of rooms and stairs where Zatanna has hit something years prior that can help them get out of there. Unfortunately, they find Waller's goons have found this forest and are beginning to burn it down. But even without his powers, Superman jumps into actions, battling the goons with Zatanna. The fire burning more and more of the forest, Zatanna quickly retrieves the secret item she hid, a short storybook written by the Queen of Fables about the Oblivion Bar, hang out for any and all magical denizens which we've seen previously in Absolute Power Task Force 7 Issue 3 when Jay Stone went and broke up the magical gathering that was happening there. Zatanna reads the story and the spell activates, turning her and Superman into literal words on the page as it teleports them to the Oblivion Bar. In a nice bit of connective tissue with that Task Force 7 issue, we learn from a young bartender that Jade Stone has been there recently and he attacked the citizens there but left the bar intact and the bar repaired itself and now they've just been kind of laying low and kind of staying out of everything and just hiding away from everything that's been going on with Waller and the rest of the Earth, and Superman does not take this news well. In a surprising turn of events, he actually ends up yelling at the magical beings, calling most of them cowards for running and hiding. And I really like a lot of the people there do seem kind of ashamed or embarrassed, especially after Superman of all people just came in and starts calling them cowards and calling them out for just hiding away, even when they still have their powers and their friends are in danger. It's a really good way to show that Superman is respected in the superhero community and supervillain community and it's not like his powers that give him that that power. It's how he carries himself, how he is that type of hero. And we've seen it all done before where like certain villains will actually respect that Superman is there to fight them or you know sometimes they'll even fanboy or fangirl out. And I like that Williamson has been able to capture that. He's done this a couple of times throughout this series and it's always really fun to see when a villain like tackles with Superman that they, they have a respect or a mutual respect for one another and I like we see that here. To make matters worse it turns out the now grown up Kid Warlock is there and decides to stand up to Superman, reminding him of the little fight they had which we saw in the flashback at the start of the issue. Luckily Superman has a little bit more experience he did when he was Superboy and easily beats the villain even without his powers and against magic. And I like when writers remember that even without his powers, Superman can still throw down since not only is he, you know, a big Kansas farm boy, he is also trained, you know, in hand-to-hand -hand combat by Batman and knows a bunch of different alien martial arts. After dealing with Kid Warlock, someone eventually does offer up the map of Mordru, and it's none other than Neron, the until recently ruler of hell. Tom Taylor recently did an arc with him over in Nightwing, which was really damn good and uh, kind of got usurped the role of ruler of hell, so he's no longer the ruler of hell, so I'm guessing he's just kind of hanging out in this bar just until things cool down, and he takes this chance and reveals that he has been in possession of the map for a very long time long time and of course he wants to make a deal with the heroes for the map. Superman's adventures with Zatanna continues to be a lot of fun, exploring a side of the DCU that Superman seldom treads in. I like that Clark and Zatanna have a really unique dynamic, sharing familiar trauma with one another, kind of bonding over it and kind of realizing that hey yeah we're both kind of in this together, we're both human. I like that when writers do that with Superman. Clark also being a Superman without his powers is always fun to see as well, more so now thanks to the stakes Absolute Power has put on this, thanks to his son being in danger 
danger, his fortress being destroyed, and everyone he cares and loves about being in danger in some sort of way from Waller or things that have spun out of what Waller is doing. With Neron getting involved and Superman making deals with devils, I'm looking forward to where Williamson and Campbell will take the series in its next installment. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10.